So what are the character traits that you search for when selecting a student for studying at IIM Indore, specifically IPM? Like, do you give any weightage to extracurricular activities? This is a question which is very uh, popular among the aspirants. Yeah, a few days back I answered that uh, to one of my IIM Rohtak students that somehow people asked me that on Quora, I answered there also. It keeps on coming back every every day, every year. So, see, there are certain set parameters for evaluation in the interviews. It's not uh, that I like your face, therefore I will give you more marks. It cannot be done. Uh, we have to assess the students on certain parameters. I cannot reveal those parameters, obviously. But extracurricular have a weightage only if they show that somebody has done something extraordinary well. That means a national level sporting event, uh, uh, a five-year uh, dance or uh, Sangeet training, right? Some people come with say, you know, I'm interested in dance. Okay, so what dance form do you know? No, I do just Bollywood dance. I'm sorry. Uh, I am, I'm an Instagram influence. Come on. Everybody is an Instagram influencer, right? So that kind of extracurriculars or I'm an avid debater. Where have you been debating? I've been debating with my siblings and my parents and in my colony. No, that doesn't sell. That is not your extra. Many people come with those kind of things. There is another fad, which is like, uh, you know, I should work with an NGO. Now understand this, most of the NGOs are fraud. You are busy in your board exams. You have not got any free time to spare for those NGOs. No matter how passionately are you going to talk about that, I'm not going to trust you. Most of this is a fake certification. Right? Sometimes some people genuinely do it and it shows in their other activities and their talk. But getting an NGO certificate is a big fraud. MUN, not welcome. All these are generally a kind of CV point exercises. Don't get into CV point exercises. What we are really looking for, and I have answered this on Quora somewhere, understand this. Think it from the professor's mind, think it from the recruiter's mind. These are the two people who are going to decide your future in the first five years and then later on, right? Think from their minds. What are they looking for? They are looking for sincere people. They are looking for academically inclined people. They are looking for people who are intelligent, sincere, and disciplined, and most importantly, humble. So if you are being over stylish, arrogant, if you are being very casual, so good dressing is not going to get you in, but poor dressing, unshaven face, filthy shirt, tie with, uh, you know, dalka, nishan, all that is going to get you out. And I'm not joking, That's, these all things have happened. People are casual. That is what gets you out. You will not get selected for a very Armani Versace suit, but you will get rejected for filthy dressing, casual dressing, bad dressing, bad behavior, rude behavior with you know, people, boastful about, you know, I'm too good in mathematics. Okay, I will give you that level of question that probably I even cannot crack, right? So I will bring you down first. And then I will ask you now, understood? And in fact, I don't have to give you a difficult question. People crack in very simple questions, right? And if you think that you can compete with uh, people who have like studied for 10, 12 years in mathematics or economics and business and all this, you are going to end up uh, in a sad place, right? Don't be boast. I mean, having pride and self-confidence is good, but boastful and arrogant, no. There is a very fine line between these two. And we see all kinds of people. So think from their minds and you will know who's kind, what is the thing we are looking for. Yeah, so another thing that you just mentioned briefly is that you don't need to answer all the questions. You just should be confident in yourself and it's not necessary for you to answer all the questions, right? In fact, uh, if somebody doesn't know a particular question, we would be happy to listen that I'm sorry, I have forgotten. I'm sorry, I don't know. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not able to recall. But uh, what most often people do is they try to fake their way through. And uh, they have to give some answer. That's a really bad strategy. And uh, you know, when somebody gives a fake answer, when somebody gives a made up answer, 
we don't tell them that you are an idiot. We extend the rope further. So I nod like this. Yes, yes. So when you are saying this, it must be followed by this also. And people get into that fake confidence mode that yes, Lakkai, he has bought my crap. So I will further go on. At the end of it, they get the surprise because my interview was very nice. Everybody was smiling. Then how come I got rejected? That is what happens. Right? In fact, many a times when I'm grilling you and I'm not smiling and I'm staring at you like this and uh, you are hell scared and I'm forcing you into answering difficult things. Probably it is because you have answered the previous thing well. It's like, you know, GMAT algorithm. If you answer something rightly, it will give you a difficult answer, a difficult question next. If you answer something wrong, it will give you an easier lower level question next. We do probably the similar kind of thing. If you are a good student, you'll face a lot of stares, a lot of weird faces, a lot of difficult questions. If that is happening, probably you are going to get selected. Please like and subscribe to his channel because I will talk to him more.